Hey everyone, I'm with the great man Reese Rogers, who somehow had the insight many, many years ago to come up with an unmet need. He was the need. I'll tell you what the need was, Reese. You were having people were going in, looking at properties, um, committing to them, then finding out that there might have been problems. And they were getting upset because they were spending all this money and having all these aspirations on this home. And then you were quietly working away, thinking to yourself, how do we work within the law, the framework in Australia, that we can give people an idea of the home? No different to the way NRMA uh, was providing car inspections, right? In a very exactly. similar way, right? Yeah. Uh, that was giving people some surety. And uh, there came before your bid was founded. How so? I, I'm curious because you're not a real estate person, or you're not a builder. How did it happen, Reese? It was I, I. I hadn't even bought a property until about six months ago. So it was actually a real estate agent who I'm mates with, um, Pete Starr, who works in the Double Bay area. Um, yes, used, used to be McGrath out Bell. Um, and he was complaining about opening up a property twice for a building and pest inspection because we were, I was working in an insolvency accounting firm. And he was like, oh, i got to go out and spend an hour out there and i got to do it again on Wednesday. I was like, that sounds like a bit of a waste of time. Why don't they share it? Uh, and he said, well, uh, the first person gets nothing back, so they never make it available. So that was kind of the light bulb moment um, nearly 10 years ago. Um, and then so we, we built this consumer platform marketplace, which is now quite a big part of our business. But... Within a few months, I was like, geez, it's hard to find these consumers. Um, you know, I'm not REA, I'm not Domain. Um, so how can I get these reports out, you know, in a more kind of streamlined, consistent way? And um, some agents said, look, we'll, we, we would do it if you got us something that was competitive. So that was kind of within about two or three months, we completely pivoted to real estate agents and, and now kind of yeah, servicing 1,400 offices, I think, doing over 120,000 reports a year. So... Um, a good pivot. Mate, I, 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 listen, I want to ask you, you get the fact that you do so many reports gives you data on the marketplace. Um, what's it What's it like at the moment? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to show you something before Dave comes on. This might be actually be, I, I just had a webinar for um, a company called Homein, which um, they are the broking channel for um for CBA's brokers, can you see this? Um, if I, I, can see, I can see a rep I can see a spreadsheet saying BYB report downloads. Yeah, so this shows you. So because we get reports downloaded multiple times on one listing, this shows you how many times per um, listing we get a report downloaded. So you can see it kind of was quite high in December twenty um, when it was quite a hot market, and um, then as interest rates started rising. Um, it absolutely crashed for that, you know, around June 22. There's actually a period, a month there, where we were paying people to take our reports, which is a you know, shocking business model. Um, and then it's kind of crept up again. And now it's kind of long-term averages. It's reached the September was kind of exactly bang on long-term averages of between buyers um, downloading reports. So it shows a bit of a equilibrium, I guess, back in the market. And then this is the last interesting thing I'll show because I can see David's on now, but we track, we, we get a unique data point where because multiple people are downloading a report on any given listing, we get them telling us whether they're an owner occupier or whether they're an investor. And you can see here with the collapse in investors, um, you know, showing interest in reports. And it's more than just buying houses. It's actually the, the interest levels that we can track because, and whether that be because of, you know, regulations that have come in around minimum standards in Victoria and Queensland or just interest rates going up and people having to sell. Um, I just thought that's a really interesting data point of, of less investors in the market than there, there ever has been as far as our tracking goes. Yeah, beautifully said. I might get you to stop sharing. Yeah. I did notice uh, David uh, did come on. He's just getting his camera uh, focused. Yeah. In. There he is there. Uh, David, can you hear us? Yeah, I've got you. Sorry, I'm not, not sure the Zoom link didn't work, so we're all good now. It's okay. It's okay. Reese is uh, good on the fly. He's got the <laughs> gift of the gab. That uh, he is. So, David, uh, thank you for joining us. Um, 
it's much appreciated. And for the all audience that's on here, uh, David Walker is, uh, apart from being a great human being, he doubles up as being an even extraordinary real estate selling principal. And now I get, I, I lose track of all the awards you win, but I just want to ask you, your Ray White company there in the North is the number one real estate office for the Ray White Group in Australia and New Zealand. Am I right there in saying that? Uh, yeah, so we, we're number one Ray White um, business. So I think this year actually Hazley and Maddie Lank uh, pipped us at the post at uh, the, the end, so I think they took it out this year. So we were last year. So we're um we're in, we're in a, a battle with them. They're uh, they're great guys up there, but we're in a battle with them for for top spot. They're very they're very good. In fact, I was talking with Matt Lancashire yesterday, and he's actually doing something for the real estate gym a face to face event for me next month. And um, um, yes, he's he's they, they've been doing that. They they you you know they've got a great business as well there, and um, they work in a great part of Queensland as well. They probably have a fee, even though it's Brisbane. I wouldn't be surprised, David, if they've got a a higher fee per deal than what you guys do because oh, I think I think they do. Their average comms a lot higher up in Brisbane. Um, I was having breakfast with him on on Tuesday actually, um, but he's a great guy, him yeah. and Hazley. So you've been you've been away with Ray White in Port Douglas, have you? Yes, yeah, so I was up there up there for a couple of days. Okay, so. Um, they and 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 apart from your office being so well awarded, you as a selling principal, you're always. I mean, I remember when you spoke for me and John McGrath at Eric. You know, you're a top selling principal. You're right around four or five million GCI, don't you? Even more than that, I think. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Year on year, um, up around that sort of level. David, you know Reese. Um, you're a very big client of Before You Bid. This is not going to be a commission breath. We're not trying to sell you anything here. We're hoping that we're going to give you some useful content. We might make reference to how Before You Bid fits into that, but I want to touch on negotiation tactics. I want to talk about trust building I want to talk about objections. I want to talk about efficiencies in sales. And I want to touch on one case study, particularly, uh, David, about um, what Reese was telling me at a time when you gave out a report. And uh, I'll let you tell the story afterwards. Um, I'll let you tell the story afterwards. But to kick it all off, firstly, I want to ask you, how is your marketplace volume-wise and what's the buyer energy like at the moment? Yeah, look, our, our volume numbers um, are nearly double what they were a, a month, two months ago. It's a bit of being spring selling season, but certainly higher than what we've we've seen over the last couple of years. Our, our, in a good week, we're listing across our business 15 to 20 properties. Last week, we listed 39. Uh, week before that was 41. So listing volumes are a lot healthier than what they were. There's still buyers in the marketplace who are actively looking to secure deals. Um, we've made several sales already um, for the month. It, it still will be another good month, but we've gone back to basics on um, giving vendors the all of the information around what's happening in the marketplace, um, educating them on, on what is going on, um, but also working hard to get buyers to properties um, and finding people who may not be looking necessarily at the suburbs that they thought they were looking at and then bringing them and showing them other properties that might be matched for them. So it's just going back to the good old days of working hard um, for what we do and doing what we've always done, um, but actually really having to go back to the basics of getting on the phone calling people. That price has dropped. Uh, I, I believe they have from the peaks probably around 10%. So if you... Um, and, and again, when was the peak? It was probably sometime at the back end of last year, if you look at when things were going um, crazy. Uh, but from where, where they were at the, the very top of the market, we're probably back about 10%. Okay. And last question, I might get Reese to uh, jump in as my co-pilot here. What percentage of your properties are auctions? Uh, all of them. So, so we market all of our properties as auctions. 
And what percentage of your properties actually have a before you bid report? Uh, as many as possible. Um, we, we would be, well, certainly my team, um, 70 to 80 percent of them. So yeah, we've done, we've done about two thousand seven hundred reports. I'll check this morning with your uh, with your office. So we've done a few over the years since we started. Um, but do me a favour, David. I'm a vendor. You've come to my house. You've done a guided tour. We're, I'm yep. I'm about to list with you. Show me how you bring before you bid up in the conversation. If you've done two thousand seven hundred reports, you've must have found a way to actually bring this subject up successfully. Yeah, absolutely. I say to a vendor, look, the one thing that I recommend for everyone to do before we come on the market is to get um, a house health check. We need to we need to get a building and pest inspection to find out if there's any issues um, with the home because although you've lived in the home for 20 years, there's maybe something within the home that we're not even sure of that I'd rather know up front about rather than spend four weeks on the market, spend, spend your money on a marketing campaign and find out the day before the auction that there was so a termite mound um, under the house or there was some dry rot because if a buyer gets a report done for themselves it's going to read like the house is falling down whereas if they do it um, if, if a building inspection is done on our behalf it's going to be far more realistic they're very very thorough and they're reputable um, people that do it but I would rather if there's an issue up front so we could maybe get it addressed um, or we can give a transparent report to a buyer um, because if we do that and we're we're in the position where we know that the house is solid and the foundations are good, then we're not going to be worried about a buyer getting their own report, but most of the time the buyer will buy our report. So I far I would far rather know that up front than mm -hmm. um, find out the day before the auction. Well, what's the what's what's the biggest resistance, if there is a resistance that comes up when you bring that up to a vendor at a listing presentation? I actually don't get any resistance from the vendor. The only time that they then turn around and decide not to do it is if they speak to their solicitor and their solicitor advises them not to do it for some reason. I think the solicitors that advise them not to do it don't realise the, the, um, the way that before you bid works in the sense that there's no recourse against a vendor or an agent when you go through before you bid because it's an independent panel the buyers get to buy the report, so they're getting the insurances around the report. So it's not like 10 years ago before 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 you bid was around, we were getting building and pest inspections. I've always done it from the day I got into real estate. We always got an upfront building and pest inspection. Um, but the problem was we were then handing the report on to somebody who was getting it for free. If a year down the track they found there was a problem that wasn't in the building inspection report, they could then come back on the vendor or come back on the agent and said, well, you sold us the house with this report. Um, and so there was all this litigation potential if you if you did it that way. And that's when is I started. That right, is, that, is, is, that, is that a legal issue, Reese? Yeah. The, uh, and David, I don't think um, we've got in a little bit of a hairy situation but managed to get himself out of it. We're, there's an agent I won't name, but on the northern beaches of Sydney, doing the, that exact same thing, who they went for 220 grand. Um, under their the the agent's insurance policy, but still, because um, they were handing reports out, they missed a bunch of stuff, and the person couldn't sue the inspector because the inspector said it's not in your name, and so they went after the agent, and the, the agent had to pay out. So we say whether you use before you bid or not, um, just make sure it's downloaded from a third party website, so you've at least got that you know distance. I would agree. Between... I would. I, I'm picturing myself, if I was a buyer and a real estate agent said to me, oh, mate, here's a free report I'm giving you, right? Straight away, I think in my head, I'm not feeling comfortable about that. Yeah, it would also oh, create a trust. Yeah, it also creates a bit of trust where it's downloaded from an independent website. You can you can create that, you know, le level of trust between you and your buyer. I, I'm mindful that we've gone straight into commission breadth mode, though, Tommy. What other what negotiating tactics do you have for the uh, for the people out there, Dave? Well, it, 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 it comes back to you've got to educate the buyers as well. So when the buyers are coming through to say that this is great for you because you're not actually having to go and get your own building and pest and spend 500 bucks to get a building and pest inspection, you're only spending between $50 and $100 um, for a property that you're interested in buying. Um, if you are the subsequent buyer, yes, you buy the report, but you get all the insurances around it. So it's um, I, I've never I, I've never used this because you know because I I, I like you, Reese. I, I use it because it's good for me as an agent 
um, from the point of view of knowing if the property's got a problem. If their property does have a problem, we'll get it fixed or and then we'll get the report updated after getting the property fixed. Because when, uh, and it doesn't matter whether you're dealing with a $500,000 house or a $5 million house, if you're going to spend the money on buying the house, you want to know that it's in good condition. But also, I, I, I haven't sold too many houses where a buyer didn't get a building and pest inspection themselves. So even in a situation where we don't get a building and pest inspection, if a buyer gets a building and pest inspection, for example, I've got a property that goes to auction next Saturday. We've got a building and pest inspection through a buyer's agent happening tomorrow. We've already had a building and pest inspection done on this property. If the buyer's, buyer's agent gets a building and pest inspection tomorrow and it comes back and they try and say there's something wrong with it to use as a negotiation tactic, then we've already got a report done that that I'm completely confident that the, the property is a good property. So whether if if we didn't get that report done and this buyer's agent made an offer and said, oh, the building and pest inspection said it needs a new roof or it, there's a problem with it, then I wouldn't know whether their building and pest inspection was right or wrong because we haven't had one done. So it, all, all you're doing in this situation is giving yourself the best chance to negotiate knowing that you're dealing with a quality product. Do, do you want to ask you about uh, just just quickly because we're talking about negotiation and uh, before I jumped on, I had an agent ring me up say, "Tom, want to get your view? I've got a property. I've got a hot buyer on it, hot 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 buyer, um, but he's uh, either playing the game or he's being serious. He's saying, take my offer now, or I'm not coming to auction.' Which you'd hear that often, uh, 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 David." Uh, how do you handle how do you handle that? Um, look, it depends on depends on the campaign, depends on how far you're into it, depends on how much interest you've got. But um a buyer like that sounds like they want to buy the property and they'll they'll go out of their way to buy the property. But if somebody's a good buyer, they're not gonna just say, I'm this is my offer and I'm not gonna come to auction or I'm I'm not gonna buy it. They'll they'll do what they have to do. But um in some scenarios, the buyer is in a, in in the box seat to make make an offer and secure the property. With other properties, we've got four or five, six interested parties. And if a buyer comes along like that um, and wants to push their weight around, then we'll say it's going to auction. Um, they're not in control one, of the situation. Just, another question. you got one buyer prior to auction, yep. two days before auction. Do you try and wrap it up prior to auction or do you go to auction? Again, it's a case-by-case -case basis. If we've got a buyer at a good level, um, with no one else there, then we'd probably look at doing a deal. If if the buyer or if the vendor is more with than where the buyer wants to be, then then the best scenario is sometimes is to take a property to auction. I've, in the last six weeks, I've sold quite a few properties at auction that I wouldn't have got the deal done if we hadn't have taken it to auction. Yeah. Is, 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 and you don't have to say yes to Dave. And I, I did this actually, we had a session with the Midnight last month and I asked a question, I was like, Shit, I, I, if he answers one way, this might not have been a good question to ask. But, Dave, do you use how many times a report has been downloaded as a factor on, on that particular point? Like if someone said, this is my, I'm not turning up to auction, you're like, well, I've had four people download the building and pair, so I'm pretty sure this is going to be a hot auction. Um, yeah. Does that come into your thinking? Yeah, certainly, especially if you're weak. If the week of, I always say in the week of the auction, you can't be half pregnant. So you, you, as a buyer, you're either in or you're out. So if you're, if you're coming to an auction, you're starting to get contract reviewed, you're starting to get a building and pest inspection or buy the building and pest inspection, all of these are buying signals. So um, if we've had four or five people download the report, it's a Thursday before the Saturday, then certainly we're, we're excited that we're going to have a decent auction. And it's also um, in my marketplace as well, um, there's a lot of, different type of nationalities so um nationalities there's some some nationalities that will say to you oh yeah i'm interested i'll see i'll see you at the auction but then you hear nothing here crickets they don't turn up to the auction um but then if you see them with buying signals of contract um review buying the building and pest they're actually a hotter buyer than a buyer who um has you know that might just say be saying all the right things but not doing anything so it's a very very good signal if somebody's downloading, and it might only be 50, 60 bucks to buy a building and pest inspection, but if somebody's spending that sort of money, they're not um, they're not just doing it for the sake of it. But if it's free, then you don't know. Yeah, Rubenstein, your colleague, said at a conference for me last month, 
Um, he he sometimes puts on properties long settlements, really, really long settlements, to uh, get a reaction from buyers uh, contacting uh, the lawyers to change the settlement period uh, to identify themselves. Uh, yeah. And I can I, I, and and I can see I can see uh, how that could uh, help, but I think before you bid is a far better indicator, isn't it? You know. Like, yeah, yeah, definitely. And it's, it's it's as I said, it's fifty, sixty bucks, but you wouldn't be going and spending fifty or sixty bucks on something that you didn't have any intention of or, or being interested in. Who goes to the? You know, Reese. I'm curious. You know, uh, uh, well, maybe David's better to answer this. I've always been curious. When the building inspector goes and pest inspector goes, who shows up from your office there? Do, does anyone show off or do they pick oh, up? The in a, depending on the vendor, I like the vendor to be there, especially because the vendor knows the house better than anybody. And I feel like if a building and pest inspector is there and the vendor is there showing them, especially if it's one of these vendors that's house proud and knows everything about the house, then the building and pest inspector, in my opinion, will actually realise that this person has looked after the house um, and, and can answer any questions they've got. You do get some inspections where they say, they'll, they'll just, you know, say, oh, we're not, we're not sure about what's in the roof cavity. We're not sure about this. We're not sure about when the roof was done or when the house was built. If the if an owner's there that knows every single intimate detail about the house, then the owner's better off being there. Yeah. On a separate note, Tom, Tom, on, Reece, over to you, Reese. I was going to say on a separate note, Tom, as a selling point, which David, because he's been doing it for so long, probably can't remember. But that point that I raised at the start with Pete Star saying going out to a property multiple times, and it's either got to be you or your EA, right? That's got to be there um, generally, or uh, if you weren't using before, you did. And so many agents just don't add up that time as time wasted. And if you're valuing yourself as you should be at, you know, one, two, three, four hundred dollars an hour, um, hopefully four hundred dollars an hour plus, um, to be spending that time wasted with building and pest inspectors inspecting a property you're selling, um, you know, you, you've really got to value that. And by using using before you bid, you can just make sure one report done with the vendor at the start of the campaign, and then you never have to go out there again for another report unless there's yeah a buyer's agent who doesn't you know wants to get their own or whatever else. Um, which occasionally happens. Yeah. Does the pest and build do you, does the does the same person do the pest and the building or they're two different companies? 95% it's the same. There are companies where two people go out, but predominantly in New South Wales, it's the one person. Queensland, it's often two. Um, Victoria, it's usually one. Um, kind of yeah, area specific. What I what I do like, and I wasn't even aware of it until we had that event last month, Reese, where if you do get a bad report on something, the owner can go off and spend time and money repairing it and then get the report to then reflect the new work that's been done. Yeah. Um, that's going to save a lot of heartache because I just, you know, it's it's devastating to a vendor. It's actually upsetting to an agent to have to sell a property two times to get one fee, but it's devastating to an owner where they've mentally closed their mind, the deal's done, they get a bad report. Often, you know, and sometimes, David, you know what it's like. You'll try and put the deal together, but the counter offer is normally significantly more than what the damage to rectify the issue would be. Oh, and it just puts doubt in the buyer's mind. So just two things on what you said there. I would say 60, 70% of the properties that we get building and pest inspections on will get things upgraded or changed to to um, to make the report read better. And and just because most of the people are house proud and want the house to look good. But in on the flip side, I actually want the report to have a few things in there as well to show buyers that it's actually a good, genuine report. If a building and pest inspection of a 30 or 40 year old home reads that there's not one issue, then that, that smells. Um, people want to, they want a realistic report. That's why. And again, the, before you bid people that we use, they're, they're not these building and pest inspectors that just uh, write a report, like everything's rosy. They'll be realistic on it. I remember, oh, this was, this had been 15, 20 years ago. There was a guy who did building and pest inspections in our area He'd turn up. Um, he'd turn up. He'd literally be tapping on the walls with this little stick. It was like a some sort of um, 
magic stick he had. He'd, he'd do it for about three minutes, tap on a few walls, put a torch under the, the house, um, look at it, and then he was there for a total of about 10 minutes. And the, bill, the, the buyer would then turn up 10 minutes later with $700 cash, and he'd go, right, I'll, I'll give you, I'll, I'll send the report through. And I was just thinking, it, it was an absolute joke. Um, but then you, you'd get the report back. Some reports would read like the house was great. Other reports would read that the house was falling down. The buyer would pull out. And I'd go, that guy was there for, for 10 minutes. So it was such a dodgy industry. It used to be such a dodgy industry, whereas now they've got to be good reports. And I'd far rather a thorough report because I don't want a buyer coming back to us two years later or five years later with a bad taste in their mouth, even if that, if, even if it was all um, they were, they were covered, but, um, but you've got to have a report that reads realistically. It can't just read like the house is perfect because no, no house, unless it's brand new by a really quality builder, no house is ever perfect. Yeah. With uh, Reese, have you ever seen a Greek build, a, a Greek building and pest inspection? They just so go on. I think you've got something to say. You're leading me into it. Yeah, all they do. Why don't you demonstrate it? Yeah, I'll demonstrate it. This is a Greek building inspection. I don't know whether you'll be able to see it, but it's they jump up and down on the floor, right? That's all they do. All they do. And they just say, yeah, it's good, or it's not. That's it. That's his, that's the that's the here. That's the building inspection. The biggest thing now in this space, insurance is really hard to come by for these inspectors. So. Um, we ensure everyone on our platform has the appropriate insurances so that agents, buyers and sellers are protected alike. Um, and so those ones that David has mentioned, uh, you know, we kind of weed them out um, because it's not good. And, and as David mentioned, like those those buyers become your sellers. If you want to be dominating your market, you know, you're, you're, you're going to be, you want to be there for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. You're not, you're not going to dominate it in two or three years. And so if that buyer's bought a lemon off you, uh, because you gave them a dodgy report, uh, you know they're probably not thinking about the selling with you because they probably haven't had a great experience. A hundred percent. What do you reckon, David? You reckon yeah. these conversations about rates in the last day or so, inflation figures that came out weren't great. A lot of the economists have turned around and said, "Oh no, no, there's more rate rises," and they're saying that if they don't raise them, they're being uh, negligent. Um, and they're even forecasting rate rise in November, rate rise December. What do you, what's your feeling? Do you think that'll happen? Um, look, I think they're probably, from the sounds of it, will will be another rate rise. Uh, I don't know. A lot of these economists seem to say what say what they want to say, but um, I don't know if a lot of it ever comes off. Like all of the rate rises that we saw didn't seem to really have a huge impact on inflation. So. Um, but it, it more than likely will happen because essentially, if inflation's high, then interest rates have to go higher. But I don't think will even if interest the market, will it impact your your you do you, do you think with what's yeah. happened this week on the weekend there will be less energy? Um, probably uh, the sentiment always gets impacted when the papers talk about interest rates going up. So I think somebody who's out looking to buy a house right now, um, if interest rates are going going to go up in their mind, they they probably still want to buy a house, but they may not be as bullish when they're bidding at an auction or they may not be um, as uh, spirited because they know there's going to be a lot more coming on the market. So I think ultimately we're just in a in a market that's probably not a bad time to be buying in. But the good thing about the Sydney property market that I've been in for 20 years is um, you go through a period like this and it's a very, very, very quickly it turns. So um, people, when the market is... Flying. They want the market to slow down like it has, um, but it, it, it might be slow for a little while. But it, it gets good very, very quickly. Reese, what's your 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 view? I mean, you must have seen the correlation when rates. I think when rates start going up excessively, I think more listings come onto the market. Oh, not last year. It went like went really low last year um, in terms of listings when the, when the rates went up, but. We saw a collapse in the, the that download rate I sh showed earlier. It definitely impacted buyers going through just because they weren't sure where, when does this end. But it's stabilised. It's back to long term averages. So I think it's a pretty it's a pretty good buyer slash seller market. It seems on pretty even keel. I mean, David, you'd see it in your market better than I would. But yeah, we we just track the download rates. So it's kind of back to long term averages. So it feels like a good time to sell, a good time to buy. Just kind of you know in that equilibrium as opposed to 
a really good time to buy or a shocking, you know, a, 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 a really good time to sell. I think some agents have just been in markets where you show up and, you know, things sell. Whereas now we're just, it's, it's going back to when I started in real estate, it was, you, you know, you had to put in the work, you had to do everything, all of the one percenters to get things sold for good prices um and to be leading your market and that's where that's where we are at the moment well, i don't know if you do this david I, I know a big group on the northern beaches they do about 500 sales um across the year um they when it was a really tough market last year they went back and because we update their crm with everyone who downloads the reports they said they pulled all that data out of everyone who downloaded the report in the last 12 months knocked out all the people who bought a uh, property so there's about 700 hot buyers there and for these listings, which they were like, we're not just selling these like hotcakes like we used to. They were just getting on the phones to these hot buyers who had downloaded reports previously and not purchased a property. Do you, do you guys go back and look at that hot buyer data for stuff that's coming up? Well, we do a similar thing. We, we go back to bidders, um, active bidders that we've had at, at auctions. Um, but that's not a bad idea at all to, to do that because if somebody's downloaded a report, then they're obviously... a they were or are a keen buyer at some point in time. Yeah. What's your view, David? Today's the 26th. Let's assume you go to a listing presentation next Friday, mm -hmm. which will be the 1st, 2nd, 3rd of November, say. Yep. I want to ask you, are you putting, will you auction, will you, will you still be auctioning properties, signing them up now and auctioning them in December? Um, yeah, so the the second weekend in December is probably the latest you'd want to be auctioning something. I think a lot of people, a lot of buyers will, all the hot buyers in the market are buying now. So no one, no buyer wants to wait until really until December to buy something. There's very, very few buyers in the market. So as a vendor, you probably wouldn't want to be um, selling too, too much closer than the second weekend of December because by then your buyer pool is a lot smaller. Yeah, and when and when um, your office, you're gonna. What do you reckon the break's gonna be? What 20, 20, 20 second, twenty third to around the tenth of Jan? Yeah, roughly about that. Yep. Okay, Reese, can I ask you um, before we go here? In all the time, I'm I'm sure there's fifty reasons why people love before you bid, but for you. What do you reckon is the most common answer people have said, this is what Before You Bid has done for my business? What do you reckon is the best out of the lot? Time, time, save time. So in terms of, not and, and in quite a few different ways. So either you know, opening up a property multiple times for inspection or just getting that email from us, hey, Tom Panos downloaded this building and pest inspection. And so you've had, you know, if you're a good agent, you've got five, six open homes on a Saturday. You've had 50, 60, 70 people go through, hopefully. Uh, and then we give you the five names of the people who have downloaded the report across those listings. And you know that it's 80% likely that's your buyer. Um, you know who to focus on. You know who to call first. You know who you can get an unconditional offer from. You know who you can sell pre-auction to um, or without a condition on a, on a calling off period. So, it's, yeah, it's, it's time. Time is the number one thing agents get back by using our product. I think that would be right for you, David, as well, potentially. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd probably, I'd time definitely. Um, I also would say knowledge and control because if you've got the knowledge around the product and you know that the product's a good product that you're selling and there's no issue, then you can control the process. As soon as, you, if, as soon as you're not in control of the process because you get a buyer that does a building and pest inspection two weeks into a campaign, you find out there's past act activity of termites or you find so you lose your first couple of buyers, you've lost control of the process. So um, a, a process like before you bid keeps you in control and gives you the knowledge around the product. How many staff have you got, David? We're at 113. And you're still listing and selling a lot yourself. Yeah. Get, get this, sorry, Tom. I'm going to jump in here. I was down at the Ray White Adelaide um, conference the other day. And David was presenting and I could just see everyone's kind of jaw dropping as he's talking. So he was like, yeah, I don't work Fridays, don't work Sundays. He does, you know, three, four, five million GCI. And his plan is to get rid of all that at some point in the next few years, give it all to his team so he can just manage the office uh, and manage his, manage his staff, which is what, you know, he loves to do. So, um, 
I saw everyone going, how can you possibly give away that GCI to your staff? But um, it's kind of testament to the culture he's building there in that Upper North Shore uh, office group. Yeah, and not only that, he's, you know, he's a, he's, a, he's, he's a decent father and he's a decent husband and he tries to take time away with his family and he uh, tries to be a present uh, family member. Um, and I know that uh, very well from him. And um, yeah, he wears socks as well. So he, <laughs> he's, got, he's got. You do wear socks, right? I do wear socks, Tom. He wears socks. He wears I socks. I do wear. Yeah, he's, he's up. He's up in Warunga. He's not in Double Bay, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> I've got. I've got my expensive. Uh, my expensive Apple Watch on as well. Yeah, well, I've got to listen. I've got to tell you, I got the, I got the, I got the new bigger one. I've got to tell you, I am obsessed with trying to get technology to always make me more efficient. I'm always, I, my phone's got all these apps that have been used once, right? But I've got to tell you, it's just a lot safer just to use the native stuff that Apple, have, their reminder app is absolutely fantastic, right? Uh, reminders works very well. Um, but this, uh, this new phone, I've got to tell you, Reese. you know what I love about it? You'll have to speak to Apple, right, and try and work out an integration with before you bid. Did you know with this phone here, you go like this, and it actually controls the watch. Were you aware of that? I read about this this morning, and yeah. I was thinking I might need to upgrade. Yeah, it's, it's, really, it's really good. So what actually happens is you might be in the gym or someone comes up to you, you got your headphones on, and all you do is they're about to speak to you, you just go like this. It just stopped. <laughs> then you just go like this, play it again. That's that's too much technology for me, Tom. Hey, I Mom, couldn't even get I couldn't like even get on a coffee. Zoom. <laughs> Another couple of what's that ad? That's what you look like you're doing. <laughs> yeah. All righty, team. Thank you so much. Reese, can I say there's be by the way, if anyone's watching and they've heard before you bit, and they've heard before you bit, and it takes you 17 times to hear it before you think, okay, let's suss this out. Where do they go before? Do, is it the best thing is to go to the main website beforeyoubid.com.au or is yeah, it better to go to contact us, chuck your details in? Um, one of our you know team will be in touch. Um, oh, I'll, I'll just give out Reese's phone number. Everyone just call Reese. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. no, no. <laughs> you can actually, to be honest, like <laughs> uh, it sounds it sounds ridiculous, but nearly I'd say ninety five percent of ideas for our businesses come from agents either politely giving us the idea or not so politely giving us the idea. Um, so I, I love speaking to agents. I, I, that's one that I genuinely enjoyed that part of the business. So I wouldn't really care if my number got out there. You can probably find it somehow. Um, and, and similarly, as you say, obsessed with tech, Tom, we are obsessed with tech that makes agents' lives efficient. So anything we can do, any suggestions, we love, love hearing from agents about that. Listen, before you bid is one of my favourite partnered organisations because I never, I'm not joking, Reese. I never, ever have, I've never had it in two, three years. I've never, ever had anyone ring me up and say, Tommy, I know you vouch for them. Um, I've got an issue. Not one person. They don't complain. It's Never had an issue. Now, oh, I have. I, that I, have. Issue. <laughs> I, I have. But, I have, but it's, it's thankfully pretty pretty low. But um, I will shout out to you as well, Tommy. We are we we're a partner of Tommy uh, before the kind of interest rates went up and tech companies got crunched. And so I called him and said, look, we might have to pause our sponsorship just because money's a little bit tight. And you still were plugging up business for for that whole period of time. So shout out to you, Tommy, because that was that was appreciated, mate. I think to my one thing I've learned, and it's taken me a long time to learn it, is um, it's a long, long game. It's a marathon. As tempting as you are to be greedy short, be greedy long. That's what you've got to do. Greedy short always gets trumped by greedy long, and greedy long is understanding, mate, I know I'm going to be here, God willing, it's going to be a health issue. By the way, you know David's dad? You know his dad's a famous doctor, right? Yeah, I went to school with David. That's not why I used the product. Oh, did you really? Yeah, same year. Yeah. Yeah, so David's, so David's dad uh, has put this, these apricot kernels, right, this thing that gets 
has got research that is good as an anti-cancer substance, right? Whether it's the placebo effect or not, the bottom line is I just, I take these things like it's toothpaste, like okay. it's water, right? And then someone said to me the other day, does it work? And I said, well, I'm here, right? I'm here and I'm taking it. And um, yeah, they're, 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 they're very good. Does your, is your dad still in medical practice? Is he still practicing? Yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah, absolutely. He's a cardiologist. Yeah. Yep. I'm taking, we're going to the uh, Paul McCartney concert tomorrow night. So looking forward to that. Oh, I'm going to be there as well. With, I was meant to be taking my parents, but my mum got a hip replacement, so I'm just going out right. with my siblings. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we really digressed. <laughs> no, we have. <laughs> I've got to tell you something fascinating. I noticed people love digress. People just love it. People just get fascinated. You know, I'm fascinated to hear about uh, this guy, Paul McCartney. You want to talk about playing the long game. You know I've, I mean? I've actually got two, I've got two tickets to sell if anyone, you know, out there wants to buy it. Cost price or even a discount will do. Um, right. so, so there we go. Get him up. <laughs> get him up. Anyway, David, uh, it'd be good to um, to see you before Christmas or see yep. you in Byron Bay. It'd also be good. We're doing an auction for Ray White up in North Shore soon. Okay. 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 Beautiful. So um, I'll probably see you uh, at that on the eleventh of November. Thanks a lot, Susan. 11th of November. It can't be the 11th of November. That's the, the week of the block. So it's not, it must the be. Fourth the 4th of the fourth is the of November is the week of the block. But thanks for trying. 4th of November. <laughs> don't doubt, don't doubt Susan, Tommy. Shanghai. Shanghai. Oh. Google, Google, Google Shanghai characteristics females and just see what you get. Very aggressive, very <laughs> assertive, very dominating, very domineering. Doesn't mean I'm wrong. It's like been good, good catching up. Uh, Reese, thank you again. For those of you that want to save time, have more control, have good data access to work out who's a high probability buyer and also a potential seller, which we haven't spoken about because let's quickly just touch on that. Explain, Reese, very quickly how it can help you pick up a potential seller. So we did an analysis, 1,500 people who downloaded a report on our platform. We tracked them for 12 months. 20% of them sold their property within that 12-month period. Further 10% had something to sell and would have if they'd found something to buy. So you've got obviously seller buyers um, who are downloading a report. That's about you know, yeah, around 70%. And then you've got buyer sellers. So um, a big thing, a mention, I'm sure David does as well. Uh, focus on the downloads, not just as a buyer, but as a potential seller. If you can get them to a property you're selling, someone in your office is selling, one of your competitors is selling, who cares? Um, treat them well, get them into it, and you've got a listing on your hands. Well said. David Walker, Ray White, Reese Rogers, before you bid, Tom Panos, Real Estate Gym, signing off. We'll see you all next month. Thanks. Thanks.